and about illegal raves. <coughs> I found this pretty interesting article on Mixmag regarding illegal raves happening at the moment during coronavirus lockdown, which got me thinking. People are having fun, even though I'm not having fun. <laughs> um, I assumed this was happening anyway, right? I assumed kids were out there, you know, trying to make it happen whilst they're in lockdown because I, I know, trust me, like, I think I realize a lot of things about myself during lockdown, you know. Prior, I did try to, uh, I did kind of tell myself this story that I'm this going out guy and I go out all the time, but I don't really, right? I go to see DJs I like to see play, I go to gigs and stuff, I go to, you know, whatever. I, if I'm going play, if I'm playing out myself, I'll maybe go to another kind of after party to keep the, the vibe going. But for the most part, I'm not really out, out all the time. Because if I was, this would be hell to me. But the last three months of lockdown have been pretty cool. I've enjoyed it a lot, right? Reading a bunch, watching documentaries, writing, all that good stuff. So I've kind of, en I've really enjoyed it. Um, So that's probably why I've made <coughs> completely no effort to look online and find out if things are going on. I don't really give a shit. And I'm not, and I would never go anywhere, you know, because I don't really feel safe being around, you know, strangers uh, during this time. But I was obviously very aware that there's definitely people out there that are doing the complete opposite, and they're having a hell of a time. That's for sure. And this is an article from Mix Mag that kind of breaks a bit of it down. So it says here, people are breaking lockdown to attend illegal raves across the UK. Raves have been condemned by established UK free party crews. Says the following. It's the early hours of May 25th, just hours after Boris Johnson made a televised address defending his uh, advisor Dominic Cummings. And more than two months into the lockdown, the East London High Street that we're walking down is almost completely empty. We go past the train station with a flickering neon light, then turn left down a side street, walk alongside a rail track for a couple of hundred miles, meters, sorry, a couple hundred miles. Imagine that, going to, walking a couple hundred miles for a rave. That is a mad one. Anyway, it continues. Uh, walk alongside the rail track for a couple hundred meters until we're standing outside an industrial area uh, yard sorry where the thump of a hypnotic house baseline is drifting into the warm summer night there's nobody hanging around or queuing outside so i bang on the metal gate and after a brief argument over the 20 pound entry we're allowed to pass into a unit under one of the rail arches wow when we get in the air feels hot and wet and the scene seems both familiar and after so many weeks of lockdown completely alien at the same time yeah imagine what it must be like to go into a warehouse rave during a lockdown i think once lockdown's over our minds will sort of switch and be like oh yeah i know I'm, i know where i am at now and you'll kind of get into the groove again but imagine what it must be like to kind of go in the room and you know you shouldn't really be there you all know you shouldn't be there it must be like ooh, so thrilling and it? it must be exciting it's like it's like all the people that were moaning and like people were looting like oh you were looting take away from the measures of black lives matter protests it's like come on brother you know if you were there protesting and suddenly it turned you know from the morning and then it went from you know it went from sunrise to sunset and all of a sudden you know all the monsters came out to play people in a flipping antifa mask creeping around and suddenly someone flings a bat or a brick through the van store you might jump in and get yourself a little slip on do you know what i mean um that's just what it is because you all feel a bit naughty so i guess the same thing happened if you go into you saw raves and your friend kind of gets you out you go and go and grab a little a little rose in the park you grab yourself a little slice of pizza from flipping voodoo rays or whatever that gets delivered to the park and you're sitting there chatting about some dude that you met on tinder that's telling you he used to play for some dumb band that doesn't exist and then suddenly, you know, you get persuaded to go pick up a couple of grams of kit. And then here you are under a bridge somewhere in East London thinking, bloody hell. <laughs> um, anyway, let's continue the article. It says here, it continues. It says, um, the room is dimly lit and around 50 people are dancing while the DJ spins bubbling bass heavy house records. Yeah. This small illegal rave is one of the several that have started springing up across the country despite the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the legal measure restricting mass gatherings of people which have been introduced in an effort to stop the spread of the disease. Early in the month, on the 16th of May, West Mercia police announced that they had shut down a rave in Shropshire that had uh, estimated was attended by 70 people. Bloody hell. I'd assume the rave ended in, under a bridge in London. That's the thing that's weird, isn't it? I wonder why they I guess when they stop these raves in like the middle of nowhere in England and they popular and they kind of splash them all over the news is that's probably just this way just probably to put kids off in it 
but I'd assume there's loads of other things going on at the same time. It's why wouldn't you talk about the one coming happening in London? I guess they don't want to. I guess they're afraid if they put the the one under the bridge on on BBC, other kids just get inspired. They want to put on a rave, right? But I guess you can. Is that maybe a thing? Because I, I I never really understood that. Like, why why do you bait up the kids doing something in Shropshire, but you wouldn't bait up anyone doing something under a bridge somewhere in Hackney? So it continues. It says the same night that we attended a rave in East London, a group of and I'm saying Hackney because they said East London, but I'd assume it's Hackney. Where else is it going to be? Um, the same night that we attended a rave in London, a group of people set up a sound system and held a party in Kirk Store Valley nature reserve around two miles away from Leeds city center with local media estimated 200 revelers attended jesus christ a nature center think of the animals mate um it continues so during the same weekend another group of people set up a sound system at botany bay with one resident from the area estimating that 40 people attended the overnight party in the early june and in early june two large raves took place in merseyside as well as one in west lovian where ravers partied in the abandoned hospital for settling in setting fire to it oh my god that is madness you guys oh it's a band okay you, you, you that's pretty gnarly though isn't it that's pretty cool it's sort of like a a weird kind of spin on burning man maybe in it like <laughs> bloody hell um it says what appears to be the uk's first social distance free party was given the go-ahead by police a few weekends ago while all these raves uh made nationwide news headlines including the one we visited on 25th of may they are tiny by the standards of the uk free party scene they aren't using large sound systems and have been condemned by many of the larger established party crews who are continuing to hold off from throwing raves until the lockdown ends yeah i guess if you're part of the people that are throwing you know you're part of those, those promotion groups or event companies that are putting on events in warehouse spaces when you know times are good you know prior to covid you're probably annoyed because you know they're selling your name they might do more harm than good and you know how the uk government is right one of these legal raids fucks up when stuff reopens there's no guarantee that they won't insert some sort of law that really fucks over these people that put on warehouse parties anyway the legal the legal one so you don't want a couple of illegal events to actually fuck up the chances for people that actually put on legal parties to put them on i get that but let's be honest in it these are these are like cow i'm assuming these are quote-unquote cowboy operations run by kids you just you know that just have the means have the time don't give a fuck no parents around just to kind of put on the party for their friends to kind of get you know have a good time and i think if you're clever about it this of course i wouldn't advocate for it but i guess if you're clever about it and you have a you know a little group of friends that you don't mind having around your house to play some records and have a dance do it if it's not gonna hurt anyone i guess in that regard of course you're hurting people because you're not meant to be outside you're meant to be you know what's it's in your little social bubbles or um locking yourself down so you don't so if in case you're asymptomatic you're not passing on to anybody but if you truly don't care like which i think this is another um, illustration of what i said earlier in the beginning of the show about there being two camps right the people that are pro mask and the people that are just you know don't give a shit that's it that's the two camps and i guess the same would be for these events it's either you think that the events are going to harm the you know the legacy of free open air warehouse parties or you just think you know what fuck it i'm doing what i'm doing it's you know it's kind of its own thing it's a little silo thing i'm doing at this moment once everything else pops off i won't be around anyway uh, maybe or maybe if you're a larger promotion group or you know you might be nervous because these guys are like picking up loads of clientele during this time that you're locked down and you're not you know kind of obeying the rules they're probably kind of you know sweeping up some of your customer base and they're kind of you know earning a bit of brand loyalty so that when things do open up the first place they're going to go to is those guys because they know you know they've been to a couple of their parties the first two are pretty shit then they start to get better you know that could be a thing it could just be like you know a bit of jealousy a bit of envy you know a bit of envy because they don't really have the possibility to kind of be as nimble as them i don't know and it continues the law you get free party scene is rebellious diverse and de decentralized by its nature and includes a broad spectrum of musical styles and political stances the scene includes groups of hedonists hippies crusties punks anarchists communists and conspiracy theorists all of which have little regard for the rules enforced by the police but largely they have chosen to abide the guidances given by the covid19 on covid19 sorry um dates which normally mark some of the high uk's biggest annual uh multi-rig parties 
uh, have come and gone without events being held out of respect for the ongoing effort. These include the annual UK Ke UK Tech, which was held last year in a wind farm in Scotland over the spring bank holiday. Instead of organising legal raves, many of the free uh, party crews have put their energies into online live streams, such as the ISO Tech live stream, which was contributed to by Keotech, Irritant and Jigsaw, and a series of more than 10 Quarantech live streams, which has been put together by Red Tech and MFC. I don't know none of those people that mentioned those names, but I imagine a lot of that music doesn't really work that well via live stream. This is thing we've kind of noticed. I think there was a bit of hope with the whole like save our scene thing from Resident Advisor that a lot of the people playing no there was yeah maybe in the beginning maybe the first couple of the first couple of weeks of lockdown or the first month of lockdown there was this hope that this whole live stream thing would be a way to kind of you know um, explore different avenues to get people within the club space area club space environment and you know um, take nightlife digital and all this sort of shit right um, uh, augmented reality VR man but once you do it or once you watch a couple of live streams you're like I even try to do a couple of live streams at home and it's just like number one it's an absolute headache to get to get it organized to get it set up it's not easy and I'm not some dumb dumb right I know how to use tech use um, electronics and technology and I know how to use stream online and I had to record and all that stuff and I find it difficult then you have to make sure you have a room to do it, which I don't. Then you have to make sure you, <coughs> you have, you know, it's of use and you know you think it's entertaining, and it isn't really for the most part. Just you sitting at home spinning records. Who gives a shit? Um, regardless of who you are, right? It's a bit redundant, which is probably why. And it, then it makes you think, oh, that's why boiler room works, isn't it? Boiler room isn't about seeing the DJ. Boiler room is about watching other people see the DJ. Really, and truly, if you think about it, it's about enjoying it's about enjoying the t it's about enjoying the dj through the people that are there kind of like collective experience you're kind of watching it through their eyes in some regard especially when they have that roaming cameraman with a rig that goes around in the crowd and someone's playing that's the best part when it's just a camera straight onto the dj it's a bit boring but when you have the other camera that kind of roams around you kind of like catch yourself oh yeah like you, you know you recognize people in the crowd or you see yourself in different people that's what makes it fun so just streaming online especially i would imagine that kind of music it's probably not the best thing um which you know it's probably the best thing i think it's probably a good thing of this lockdown it's probably exposed to good something it's like you know some things should be live streamed and some things should just be left to the club environment so it continues here it's a quote it says the following the people putting on parties during lockdown are generally not part of the established uk free party scene said a member of one large party group okay this is a uk free party scene okay then why are they bothered then it doesn't matter I thought they're talking about the kind of warehouse people crew that put on events. So it continues here. It says generally these parties are being put on by groups of very young people who haven't thought through the consequences of their actions or the complete idiots who have access to a small sound system and want to make some fast money. Yeah, that's true. That's not a bad thing though, really, is it? Um the fact that there are no clubs open and none of the established free party groups are putting on parties means that there is a gap in the market that is being exploited by responsible groups that would probably never usually see anyone turn up to a raves during normal times. Uh, he is tense, isn't it? Got com all the feelings. Nobody would normally charge anyone £20 to get into a legal rave, but in the current environment, and come, some people are so desperate for a party, if you haven't got any uh, scruples, you can charge top dollar. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. During this time, imagine if you actually put on a good rave forget even a good rave just put on something right where people could just go out go into a place and feel like they're in some sort of nightclub and you put on a couple of lights or whatever maybe you know you've got a little smoke machine you pour water into i don't know right and you charge people 20 quid they'd line up to do that especially if you've got you bring your own drinks it's not it's it's no gimme in it it's no brainer um i paid 20 quid to go into warehouse parties where they have their own bar so imagine if you bob uh, and it continues, it says, back in London at the party under the railway arches, the makeshift dance floor is heating up as jade by East End dubs pulsates out of the sound system. The area is wetter, the smoke smokier than when we first entered, and we feel a million miles away from the normal lockdown routines. Shadowy figures it, um, undulate and sweat as red, blue, and yellow lights play across their bodies. People are queuing at the bar made of plywood in the corner of the room, are laughing, smoking, and nodding to the beat as they wait paper drinks and balloons of nitrous oxide. That's the thing I noticed too a lot somewhere else parties in london have this thing where they sell balloons i guess if you're not renting the i guess if you're not hiring a place officially i don't know or 
if it's like an underground thing you're not promoting i always thought that was really sketch and unnecessary risk to take why would you put on a warehouse party and then sell balloons at the bar what if you what if you get locked down by the police or get busted by something like you know you already have to explain the fact that you've got way more people in the space than they need to be there's probably loads of health and safety regulations and things that they're going to be real up on and then they're going to go into the back and find fucking you know mad silver canisters everywhere from people just lighting themselves up with these balloons spraying it directly into their eye into their eye sockets and shit i never understood that thing and as well like it's not the i might have done a couple balloons here and there after a party right you are on your, you're on your way home um and there's always some kid outside that's want to sell you a couple balloons but i wouldn't necessarily do it in the rave as like a thing to like get yourself going it's sort of like a you get a bit you know what i mean it's uh, I, I don't know maybe it's just me maybe i'm old they continue it says anyway let's continue with the article it says it's easy to forget that we're in the heart of the capital city on an you yeah, keep repeating this on a nation that has one of the highest covid19 death rates but you're there my friend aren't you reporter in a joint statement sent to mix by to establish free party crews which oxford remain member said we've absolutely condemned anyone doing free parties in lockdown free parties are about defying bad laws the laws of property keep some people homeless da, 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 da. others own quit own multiple glittering places that keep people empty okay so people's hating the wait it says yeah that's why we do squat parties to give each other a sense of collective power okay fair enough however the lockdown isn't a bad law it's not even a really a law in reality the government has not enforced a proper lockdown like other countries and uh, and the elite like dominic cummings have completely ignored it it's been the working class who have been completely actually done their best to keep the most vulnerable safe on their end and free parties as a working class cultural movement will absolutely hold a line too that's cool so they're probably seeing it as like a weird fight against the elites maybe that's true maybe a lot of these kids are putting on these free parties during lockdown are like the kids from affluent families who have the means right mum and dad don't give a shit if you go outside right because if you if you're from a working class family there's no way your parents are going to be okay with you just wandering around the streets right um especially during covid19 they're going to be even more coached they're gonna be more cautious because they're worried if you do get ill what they're going to do right especially if you're a kid that supports your family like they don't they can't afford to have you sick but if you're some you know if you're some kid that wears palace and you know skateboards and fucking loafers you, you don't you don't really mind and then chucking a couple grand to, to buy you know to buy you know a bloody rx2 all-in-one pioneer unit some couple of big speakers and playing somewhere you know because all, all your little model friends with the little sovereign rings are gonna rock up probably i don't know but it's a pretty interesting article regardless um this is featured on mix mag check it out if you do uh, that inquired if you're that um, interested and also if you've been to an illegal warehouse party during covid lockdown in london let, leave me a comment down below or in the uk in general let me know what was it like do you like it was it enjoyable or and is it as bad as they're making it seem as i don't know i'd like to know what's going on there so let me know in the comments below anyway